From vivariums to paludariums to aquariums to terrariums. It's no secret that I've made quite a few projects over my time on YouTube, but there's one thing that I haven't made yet. I made a lot of really cool pieces such as the tree trunk terrarium and triple terrarium stone that I would consider display pieces, but nothing I would consider a decorational piece. While scrolling online I found these hanging glass planters that will be perfect for the job with a few modifications. My plan is to use these hanging glass planters along with other materials to create a beautiful piece of art. Before we begin, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for more content. To kick things off, I could just attach all of the glass globes to the wall themselves, but I want to have sort of a base to make it feel more like a solid piece. In order to make said base, I'll be using some 1 inch thick 12 by 16 boards. They're not quite big enough and I'll have to attach them to get the size I want, using a few scrap materials. I started by pressing the boards together, and then using a tape measure to figure out the optimum places to put the supports. I'll be using three different boards, so I marked multiple areas to account for three different supports. Before attaching the supports, I ran some wood glue along the edge of one side of the board, and firmly pressed them together. I then went to line up the supports using the marks I made earlier. To permanently attach the boards and make sure they're secure, I'll lock it in with some screws. I started by adding two small screws towards the end of each board. I then added another set of four towards the middle. I repeated this process multiple times to make sure everything was secure and tight. After that, I flipped the piece over. The wood comes pretty smooth as is, but a little sanding won't hurt. I probably should have done this prior to the sanding, but I decided to cover up the middle line with a little bit of wood putty. I then went over it again with the sander. I want this to be hung on a wall, and in order to make that possible I'll use some small D-rings. I added two of them to the top of the piece and secured them with screws. I was debating on what color would look the best for this, and ended up going with a dark walnut stain. I think it was the right choice. I applied an even coat over the front of the board, as well as the sides top and bottom. I also want to protect the wood somehow, and normally I'd use something like polyurethane, but not only is it expensive, but I don't have any on hand. I'll use this gloss spray paint though. Not only will it protect the wood, but it'll also give it a shiny look. After letting that dry for a few hours, I brought the piece back inside and started measuring out where I want the globes to go. The first thing I did was take measurements of the whole piece and then divide it by three. I then added some blue tape and marked the desired location. Luckily the globes already came with hangers, so all I have to do is line them up with the markings and hammer them into place. These aren't the best looking for the project, but you won't be seeing most of them in the end anyway. However, I repeated this process five more times to get all six hangers in place. I then went on to remove the painting tape from underneath the hangers, which in hindsight I probably should have done beforehand. Regardless, that completes the base, and now we can get a first look at it. I think it's looking pretty good so far, but now it's time to move on to phase 2, which is the terrariums. I'll be making 3 terrariums total. Spheres are a little annoying to work with when it comes to terrariums, so I'll use various objects like this duct tape to help keep it in place while I work. For aesthetic reasons, the false bottom will be made out of aquarium sand. I poured in even layers into all three terrariums. Then I could start adding the substrate using some pre-made ABG mix. I'll primarily be using moss to fill these up, but I will have a few plants towards the back. For that reason, I'll create a small incline towards the back. Not only will this help create depth, but it'll also create a better viewing angle. What I mean by that is I'm planning on placing this piece a little higher up on the wall, so having a good viewing angle for the terrariums is vital. Anyway, I followed this process and repeated it with all three terrariums. Normally the next step in this process would be adding the moss, but this time I'm going to add the hardscape first, using some Mopani wood. As you can probably imagine, there's not a whole lot of technique to this as the terrariums are so small, but I tried my best to create something that will look good in the end. Along with that, the terrariums aren't the main focus of the project. My whole idea here was to create something where if everything works well together, it creates one beautiful piece. Speaking of beautiful, it's time to add the moss. Before adding it to the terrariums, I laid it out on a paper towel to get a better idea of what I had to work with. Ideally, I would have had a better variety, but unfortunately at the time I wasn't able to do that. Regardless, I started by planting the taller growing mosses towards the back. Like I said earlier, the terrariums are primarily going to be planted with moss, so making sure to place them in the optimal places is key. I continued planting the terrariums and adding smaller pieces where I felt they needed it. Even though I wasn't able to get a very good variety in texture, I was able to get a good variety in height, which as I mentioned earlier is a good thing. Following the same logic as earlier means placing the smaller growing varieties towards the front. You can't see much of a difference now, but I've worked with this moss long enough to know how it grows. 
Anyway, after getting the first terrain implanted, I repeated the process with the other two, following the same guidelines. Now that the moss is in place and all three terrariums are covered, I can start adding a little bit more life using some plant cuttings. Nothing too special with the plants here, just a few smaller species that don't require high light. After all, this piece isn't going to have a designated light, so making sure that all the plants can thrive at low light is very important. I also decided to add a few small pieces of rabbit's foot fern. This isn't something I intended on doing from the beginning, but I'm glad I did. It adds a very much needed difference in texture that I felt like all the terrariums were lacking. I also have some oak leaf creeping fig on the way, but unfortunately I couldn't get it in time for the video. That will not only help with that aforementioned texture, but will also help cover the ground and break up the moss a bit. It's something that I've wanted to get my hands on for quite a while now, but I've never been able to find it for a decent price. Luckily I was able to find one, and I'm planning on propagating it and using it in future projects. Anyway, with the plants in place, that completes all three of the terrariums. Later in the build, I'll add some corks to prevent them from drying out. With the three terrariums done, we now have three containers left to work with, which I'll be filling with plants. My original plan was just to create six terrariums, but as I thought about it more, it needed something different, something that would accent it. Plants were the perfect option for this, so I began to fill up each pot with moss. This will not only help retain moisture, but will also create a great growing medium for the plants. I filled the container up about halfway, and then added the plant. The first plant I'm adding is a golden pothos. I added it to the pot, and then started to cover it up with more sphagnum moss. I then repeated this process with the second plant, which is an arrowhead. All of the plants I'm adding will not only thrive in the given conditions, but will also vine creating a really cool effect. Anyway, I repeated this process for the third and final time using a rabbit's foot fern. I chose these plants very strategically. Not only will they thrive in these conditions, but they'll also provide a great color and texture gradient amongst themselves. Now that all six pieces are finished, I need to hang up the base. I started by holding it up against the wall and then using a hammer to attach some nails for where I wanted it to go. I then used a level to check my work. Everything looked good, so now I could finally bring everything together. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is something that I've never tried before. A lot of the pieces I've made over the years have been pretty cool looking, but nothing that I would consider to be a decorational piece. This however fits that criteria perfectly. The whole reason I made this was not only because I wanted to try my hand at something a little more professional, but I also wanted to fill some empty space in the animal room. Lately I've been feeling like it's lacking something, and that won't just be filled with more tanks and animals. I needed something that would give it more personality, and I think this is the perfect project for the job. Let me know if you guys like it, and if you'd like to see more videos like this. Personally, I love the way this turned out, and for me, this is the definition of a beautiful piece of art.